I'm Gaz Morgan, and welcome to another episode of Bizarro Aficionado on Location. I'm here at the Cave of Kelpius on the edges of Fairmount Park on the Wissahickon Creek, and uh, this is another episode of Bizarro Aficionado on Location. Today, literally, in a cave house, and this cave was built in the 1690s for and by Johannes Kelpius. Now, Kelpius was a pious, and he came looking for religious freedom. He was about 26 years old when he showed up on the Wissahickon Creek uh, via Germany from Transylvania and uh, created the community, which was a doomsday cult. In fact, America's first doomsday cult and believed that the world was going to come to an end in the 1700s. So in the 1790s, around 1794 and 95, uh, he built his hermitage here. That's where I was in at the opening of the show. And it still exists today. You can still come here and see it. And uh, it's a pretty neat place. And it has some pretty bizarre lore to it. So as I said, it was a doomsday cult. They believed the world was going to come to an end. But these weren't just a bunch of religious wackos. These were highly educated uh, people from in and around the Philadelphia area. People that excelled in um, astronomy and medicine. And they were frequently called upon by their community to come out and act basically as doctors at the time for people. Uh, the number 40 was very sacred to them. So they had 40 members. They built a 40 foot by 40 foot tabernacle, which they studied the stars at the top of. And rumor has it that Kelpius's telescope still exists and is actually held at the Lodge of Theosophy up in Center City, Philly, which although I won't get there today, I do plan to follow that up before I do a full episode on the life and times of Kelpius. But one of the strangest stories having to do with Kelpius is that at the time of his death, so the 1700s came, as we all know, the world didn't end. That's in another hundred years or 10 or five. You get the point. But so 1700s came, the world did not end. So this put a pretty big crimp in a doomsday cult. So things start, people started leaving. The cult of the woman of the woods, it was called, was slowly disintegrating. Kelpius started getting sick, most likely tuberculosis, pneumonia, something like that, as the man lived in a cave. So on his deathbed, he called one of his devout disciples to him and handed him a box and said, take this, throw it in the Wissahickon River. The guy takes the box, gets down to the river, and he's like, I want to know what's in this before I just throw it away. Maybe it's important or a great memory we could keep a Kelpius. What's in the box? What's in the box? Just tell me what's in the box. So he opens the box. There's a stone in there. He decides to keep it. And uh, he goes back to Kelpius. Upon entering the cave, which I assume had a door, and it did have a fireplace up to the 1940s, uh, he walks in and Kelpius immediately says, you have not done what I asked. I need you to go get the box from wherever you hit it and throw it in the river. So uh, the guy goes back pretty startled that Kelpius knew, got the box, throws it in the river, and supposedly it explodes. So people believe that he actually had the Philosopher's Stone. Mythologizing, no doubt, but an interesting story all the same. So let me turn this around here. Uh, back in, I'm not sure when this was put here, but let me turn it around so you can actually see it here. It was a Crucian uh, Amark uh, put this monolith here. to commemorate Johannes Kelpius as the first ever Rosicrucian. Again, that's a bit questionable, but it is. Now, the graffiti at the top, I've been trying to decipher for a couple years now. And at first I thought it might have been Hebrew. It is not Hebrew, it's not Arabic, and it's not any magical script. But you have to love when even the graffiti, you know, is pretty intellectual. But so here is the cave of Kelpius. Let's go inside. There's not much left to this day, but it is still here. It was uh, plastered over, 
completely, so it would have been whitewashed, plastered. It had a fireplace. And would have had his bed and furniture and the such. People still come here and rituals, maybe, you know, of something. I know a few uh, OTO people, Ordo Templi Orientis, and a few uh, chaos magicians that come here to use this place positively. There's Dennis. Say hi, Dennis. But this is uh, the cave of Kelpius. Now, nearby is also what's called the Hermitage, which is uh, back in the woods up here. It's kind of hard to see, but straight up there is a large structure. And not when that dates to, but I assume 1800s. But that is the cave of Kelpius. Of, uh, Cave of Kelpius. I hope to get a little more on this as there is actually someone who plays the hermit and I think a little more than plays and uh, he gives tours throughout the year and I'm going to be trying to track him down and get an interview for the show. So uh, thanks for checking out Bizarro Aficionado on location.